Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be watching more Squim Gym. Today's video is TF2 versus TFC, the evolution of Scout. I cannot wait to see this, man. The last one we watched uh, was about the heavy weapons guy, and it was really, really good. And I really appreciate everybody that checked out the uh, video and liked it and commented and watched it. Man, I really, really appreciate it. You guys are awesome. So with that being said, if you're new, do not forget to hit that sub button. Please and thank you, and let's go ahead and jump into it. All right. I will say Squin Jim's like intro here, awesome man. Has a very, very cool intro. We saw how TF2 vs. Team Fortress Classic went down in the comics, but how would it go down in the games? What would happen if you just grabbed one class from one game and plopped them down in the other? Who would win 1v1? Dude, if we had like a mode where you could do that in TF2, where you could just play the T the T uh the Team Fortress Classic characters, or maybe a mode where you could play like one side TF2, one side uh classic. I'm not sure how that would like match well, but that would just be a really, really cool mode. Last time we had a very close match between the TFC heavy and the TF2 heavy, but now it's the Battle of the Scouts. And you know, it's kind of funny. I don't think the TFC Scout ever directly interacts with his TF2 counterpart in the comics. But the TF2 Scout does directly mention him in both Expiration Date and the Deep Fried Desire Taunt. Oh, man. Classic Scout. <laughs> wow. But uh, let's, let's get a few clarifications out of the way before we get to the actual match. All right. Number one, this doesn't have anything to do with the storyline or the Scouts' as characters. It's purely based on weapon stats. Number two, there will be no unlockable weapons or random crits. Oh. Only TF2 has unlockable weapons, and if you could pick and choose the exact right weapons for the exact right scenarios, it would be way too unfair of an advantage. As for random crits, I shouldn't have to explain that one. <laughs> and lastly, we're going to be trying to take everything at face value. Aside from the previous restrictions, there won't be any attempt to artificially even out any of the weapon stats. They are what they are. I know these two games are from almost a decade apart and have their own different kinds of mechanics, but if you can't directly compare TFC and TF2 when they're literally two games from the same series, then what can you compare TF2 with? True. And okay, all right, <laughs> let's get into it. In the red corner, he's kind of a big deal. If you were from where he was from, you'd be freaking dead. The <laughs> TF2 scout. And in the blue corner, he's light, he's fast. His name is Greg, the classic scout. All right. Round one, ding ding. Yeah, I like this. In the last one, he did like certain like you know different rounds of which one would be better which one has more health which one could do most damage and like you know just in general which one would win if it was just them two a fighting well, is great and we're gonna start with health the tf2 scout is tied for the lowest health in the game with engineer spine sniper at 125. the team fortress classic scout has 50 less base health with just Dang. 75 which is the lowest of all of the tfc classes but like all the TFC classes, he oh, also has the armor. armor. However, he yeah. only has a maximum of 50 armor points, and he also has the worst type of armor. He, along with the original sniper, have the light armor type, which only absorbs 30% of damage taken. Oh. So for example, if he was hit by an attack with a base damage of 100, the scout would lose 70 health points and 30 armor points. Gosh, which would mean you. he's only barely surviving that. In fact, it would only take an attack with a base damage of 107 to kill the TFC scout. The TF2 scout wouldn't exactly take 107 damage well, but he would definitely live it. I mean, he would even live it if he had the Sandman equipped, which lowers his health to 110. The TF2 scout was just able to tank a little bit more damage, so this round goes to TF2. Alright. But scout isn't exactly known for his tankiness, he's all about speed. Yeah, the speedster. And when it comes to run speed, both scouts are actually tied at 133%. Really? So that would make this round a tie. Okay, makes sense. Each version of the scout does have their own unique abilities, though. One thing that every class in Team Fortress Classic can do, that I actually didn't mention in the previous video, is a bunny hop. It exists oh. to a very small degree in TF2, but it's nothing like it is in TFC. If you didn't know, bunny hopping is technically an exploit that allows you to maintain air acceleration speeds by jumping, air strafing. <clears throat> I was say we we've we've heard of this in the past. So I can't remember if it was from. I don't think it was the one before this, but we've heard of this past where you could bunny hop in the in the original. The exact moment that you land. That's probably a terrible and way oversimplified explanation, but you get the general idea. And if you're good enough at it, you can do some pretty crazy stuff with it and get some movement options that aren't really available in TF2. Man. I didn't talk about bunny hopping in the heavy video, but the TFC heavy can of course do it too. However, I don't think it would have had that much of an impact on the 1v1. Yeah. The TF2 scout can't bunny hop like that, but he can double jump, which is not something the original scout can do. What the original scout can do is undisguise spies just by touching them. Oh. Which is kind of a weird mechanic that was... 
That yeah, that's so weird, but uh, I think that's awesome at the same time. The, sequel. the TFC Scout can also disarm and destroy Delman's debt packs just by touching them. Oh. And the TFC Scout also has the unique alt fire ability to display the status of each team's flag and capture the flag. Yeah, you just okay. click and then bam, you can see the flag status. Wow. Which is, um, it's just something that's built into the HUD in TF2, but hey, an ability is an ability, I guess. <laughs> the Scout in Team Fortress 2 has the unique ability of naturally capping points and payload carts at twice the rate of the other classes. Now, I can, and probably will, make a whole video comparing TF2 and TFC maps and game modes, but the two times cap rate isn't a thing in TFC and wouldn't really be relevant based on how capture objectives work in that game. So these two characters have quite a few different extra abilities, and they're different enough from each other that they're- I think the undisguised spies on Touch, dude, that's insane. Like, that's really cool. Kind of hard to compare. Is something like bunny hopping, for example, better than something like double jumping? I mean, if yeah. these two's absolute best potential, then yeah, probably. Is that a fair way to judge? I don't really know. I'm gonna have to give the cop-out answer here and just say this round is also a tie. Yeah, that makes Trust sense. Me, There's just too much going for each one of them to compare like that, it's honestly. It's not gonna make a difference in the end. But running fast and bunny hopping aren't the extent of the classic scout's movement options. Like the other TFC classes, the scout can grenade jump. But he also has arguably the best tool for grenade jumping, the concussion Dude. grenade, which is exclusive to only scout and medic. The concussion grenade won't damage the target, but it will cause knockback and distort their aim. This will have the same effect on the user, which allows you to make use of the knockback without taking any self damage like you would from regular grenades. And Scout is wow. actually the only TFC class not to have a regular grenade for one of his grenade slots. Instead, he has a concussion grenade and caltrops. The caltrops will do huh. 9 damage if stepped on and reduce the target's speed, with the penalty increasing the more that are stepped on. Oh. According to the wiki, the penalty can be removed by passing through a door. And I okay. don't really know if that includes any door, but it will go away if you go back to spawn. It's also worth okay. noting that the scout who dropped them can also be affected by his own caltrops, which isn't exactly ideal. Oh. I'm not really entirely sure how useful the caltrops are considered in TFC, but since in the sequel the scout has no grenades of any kind, of course the TFC scout is going to win this round by default. Makes sense, yeah. Like most of the classes in TFC, the scout uses the crowbar as his melee weapon. And we learned in the last one the crowbar is not great. It is like, I think it only did like 15 or 20 uh, a hit, I believe. And like the heavy's crowbar, it only deals 18 damage. 18, which, okay, uh, okay. Like I mentioned in the previous video, is almost half of the bat's base damage of 35. And just like in the first video, we'll be comparing how quickly Scout's weapons can deal 100 damage. Versus a no armor heavy in TFC and a big earner spy in TF2, both of which have exactly 100 health. And unsurprisingly, the bat kills much quicker, taking only 3 hits in 1.2 seconds. While the crowbar takes double the hits and 2.02 seconds. Yep. Funny enough, despite the bat being the fastest swinging melee weapon in TF2, the crowbar actually swings about 25% faster. But a 25% wow. faster swing speed for a 50% damage penalty yeah. will still be a really, really bad weapon. So yeah, TF2 easily wins this round. Yeah, easily. I guess we're going to call this next round the shotgun round. Okay. The classic scout uses the single barreled shotgun as his second slot weapon, while the TF2 scout uses the scatter gun as his primary. And if you watched the previous video, then you know what I think of the single barreled shotgun. It's it's terrible. <laughs> it fires fast, it reloads fast, and holds up to eight shots, but its maximum damage, if every pellet connects, is only twenty-four. Yeah. It's a shotgun that only deals twenty-four damage at point blank range. For comparison, one singular pellet from Scout's pistol in TF2 deals twenty-two up close. The single barrel shotgun is basically a direct downgrade to the double barrel shotgun in TFC, and the scatter gun is basically a direct upgrade to the shotgun in TF2. And the regular shotgun in TF2 is better than the double barrel shotgun in TFC. Man. So that means that the single barrel shotgun has absolutely no chance here. The scatter gun may fire slower, reload slower, and hold two less shots, but its maximum damage is more than four times higher, dealing up to 104 damage at close range. 104 damage is almost enough to just outright one-shot the TFC scout. Yeah. With the force nature and its slightly higher maximum damage, he would be able to one-shot him. Which is why we don't consider unlocks for this. It's it's kind of overkill. So, at close range, with every pellet connecting, the single barreled shotgun takes 2.06 seconds and 5 shots to kill the heavy, and the scatter gun just insta-kills the spy with one shot. But hey, from further distances, the single barreled shotgun actually has the advantage, because damage in TFC doesn't have fall-off but uh, that, that's really about it. You're not going to be using either weapon from long range, so that's not exactly saying much. 
TF2 and the Scattergun handily win this round too. This next round, we're gonna call the rapid fire weapon round, where we look at the last weapon for each scout. Okay. The nail gun okay. And the pistol. The nail gun is probably most comparable to the syringe gun in TF2. It rapid fire. How about I say a nail gun's gotta be close to the syringe gun? Man. It's gotta be. There's a bunch of semi-slow, weak projectiles, but the nails will go yeah. in a straight line and not arc downwards like syringes do. Oh. Each of these nails has a damage of nine, which is 40% less than the pistol's base damage of 15. But the nails, of course, deal nine damage regardless of range. The nail gun fires very fast, about 35% faster than the pistol, and never needs to reload. It carries a maximum of 200 ammo, and can fire it all without ever having to stop. The nail gun takes 1.12 seconds to deal 100 damage at close range, compared to the pistol's 0.65 seconds. But like the single-barreled shotgun, it starts to do comparatively better at longer distances. Technically, the nail gun can deal more damage faster than the single-barreled shotgun even at close range, and it can also technically be better than the pistol at mid-range. That is, until the target actually starts, you know, moving. You can have a constant stream of these <laughs> nails, moving. the projectiles are pretty <laughs> slow and very weak. You're not going to be consistently hitting them against the moving enemy. You'll have to predict their movement while they're also attacking you, and even if you hit them, it's only nine damage. What is going on with the dude on the ledge back there? Damage per hit. It's just like jumping Unless you're targeting a sentry or someone who's AFK, the pistol just does the job better. The fact that the pistol's a hit scan weapon means you just don't have to worry about the projectile travel time, and it just makes it so much more consistent. And that's even with the pistol's bullet <laughs> spread. If this was a secondary unlock for Scout and TF2, it might be kind of fun to mess around with, but I can't say it would be very good. The thing okay. is though, if it was a secondary unlock in TF2, you would still have your primary weapon. The TFC Scout doesn't really have anything that you could consider a primary weapon. All three of his weapons are just kind of weak. And if this was a primary unlock get, for yeah, TF2, okay, it would be one okay. of the worst weapons in the game. So, yet again, another round goes to TF2. But now, for the final round. Final round, Who okay. Wins? 1v1. The original classic scout, or the... Yeah, you, you already know the TF2 scout wins. This, yeah. This was barely even a contest. Yeah, I was like, obviously, dude, the TF2 scout has just been killing it this entire video. Scout just gets... Just doing so good. He loses in every category except grenades and mobility. And that's if we're assuming that the TFC scout, as a character, has fully mastered both bunny hopping and grenade jumping to their maximum potential. Then, yes, in that case, he does have the mobility advantage. But I'm not totally sure how fair it is to judge bunny hopping as a stat off its absolute best theoretical uses. Then again, I guess we would extend that best case scenario top level play to the TF2 scout as well, so it's only fair. But as True. far as those absolute best case scenarios go, the TFC scout could kill a full health TF2 scout with 14 shots from the nail gun in 1.33 seconds. Dang. He was standing right next to him, and the TF2 scout was just standing still and not putting up any kind of fight at all. And for the best case for the TF2 scout, he kills the TFC scout in 0.633 seconds with two shots from the scatter gun at close range. Not only does the TFC Scout's time more than double the TF2 Scout's, but it requires the TF2 Scout to be doing absolutely nothing. This, this isn't even fair. And some of you guys wanted me to include unlocks and random crits? I mean, come on now. Imagine, one-shotting with a Force Nature? Or, uh, with the Criticola, you could basically one-shot with any primary weapon. Or you could use a shortstop for the range advantage? I mean, stop, stop, he's already dead. The TFC Scout has no legitimate path to victory. I yeah. guess maybe he could stun the TF2 scout with a concussion grenade, and then maybe, maybe, if the TF2 scout misses every possible shot, and the TFC scout has perfect aim with the shotgun, then... No. No, it's it, it, not even then. I know that the outcomes of these videos are trying to be as analytical as possible using just the stats of these weapons, but if we applied these stats to those characters, then, man, if this was the best the TFC scout could do at his prime, then, then Nigel Thornberry over here is lucky he never had a run into the TFC scout. <laughs> He's dead instantly. This is like 40 years later. Yeah, he, he's dead. He got him, Nigel! <laughs> you know, it really makes me realize just how close the heavy match actually ended up being, and how much the TF2 scout lives and dies by the scattergun. In the first game, the scout was really just much more of a scout. He wasn't really meant to be attacking. He was supposed to be out there capturing objectives, and that's really it. That's yeah. That's really all he could do. Yeah, capturing an objective and letting your teammates know where people are just feels like that was his main purpose. If the scout in TF2 had the nail gun or the SMG as his main weapon like he was originally going to, then he probably would have ended up with the same fate. But the scatter gun drastically shifted how the class would be played. And for the better, I think. So I know this basically ended up being a completely unfair match, but that's, that's also what makes this fun. You can go from something that's relatively even like the heavy episode to a total blowout like this. 
Poor Greg, the man never had a chance. But hey, that was the Scout v Scout episode. Thanks for watching. And of course, a special thanks to my patrons. Like Varric, Captain Okay, Fritz. that was that was Raspberry's thinking as members, which is great. Um, that was awesome, man. Then once again, that was by Squim Jim, and I'll be sure to put the original video link down below. If you want to go check out his channel, please do, because these videos have been awesome so far, man. Like I said, I think there's a few more. I think there's five or six of these totals. I think there's three or four more. Um, if you want to see me continue to watch them, just let me know in the comments down below. I've really enjoyed these. I think it's so awesome that we're like comparing the TFC classic characters with the TFC, uh, TF2, man. I think it's just so cool. And I really enjoy the comics that we just got. Uh, we just watched the Beard uh, voice a couple of uh, like the last week and a half or so. It's been really great. So to see those two teams like interact with each other in the comics was just insane, man. It was awesome. So thank you so much, everybody that told me to go watch the series, especially after watching the, the comics. I completely understand, man. They've been fantastic. And if you haven't already, be awesome with this video with a like. It really, really helps out the channel here. And that's all I got for you, man. So if there's anything else you want to see me react to um, when I get done with this series or maybe even before we get done with the series, sometimes I watch them back to back and then sometimes I kind of mix it up a little bit depending on um, what I want to watch for the week. But thank you so much. Oh, once again, just to everybody that's been telling me things to watch and things that I definitely haven't watched. I love discovering new things and I love when you guys are... I'm just excited about it with me, especially in the comment section. You, uh, you know, you comment down and let me know how much you're enjoying the reactions or what you like to see uh, me watch next. It's just so awesome. And all the recommendations have been fantastic, man. So thank you so much to everybody. And if you don't know already, I do have a Discord. And in that Discord, there's a section where you can put a link, a video. If you want to see me react to something, it's the best way for me to get that link so I know that I'm watching what you want to see me watch. So that's all I got for you, man. I will see you in the next video. And do not forget, it's Work Army. For life.